Good evening, Prasanna. Am I audible to you? Welcome, Krishna Bhatt. Welcome, Prasanna. Good evening, all of you. Thank you so much. Oh, Dr. Dara Krenz is giving us the answer for yesterday's question. Very good. She says, Zymodine pattern enzymes, L-malate, NADP, oxidoreductase, glucose 6-phosphate isomerase. Okay, uh, you have come very close. Use hexokinase, phosphoglucose mutase. I have been already telling you already, right? So, glucose phosphate isomerase or phosphoglucoisomerase is a better answer than that of glucose phosphate isomerase. And... Uh, L malate is not an enzyme, but if you could use the word NADP oxidase, that can be an idea answer. Yes, good evening, uh, Suraj Patil. Good evening, Wilson Timu. I'm so happy that all of you are here. So, shall we start the quiz if you're all ready? Good evening, Shivang Sharma. I'm just looking at the phone so that I can see your messages. Please don't find it weird because I will be answering. I'll not be able to see the comments from my own laptop, which I'm using for relaying this class. So I have to rely on my phone on the side to look at the comment section. Yes, good evening. Good evening, Shreya Reddy. Good evening, Shreya Modi. Good evening, Krishnabhat. Excellent, all of you. Thank you so much for joining me on time. So let me tell you, this is the one and only menti quiz we are going to have in this month. <laughs> we have only one menti quiz on this month. And what is happening on the other side, on the N Academy app, we are having, that is free classes, live classes, that is 90 minutes worth of classes every single day, which contains 60 MCQs. We are finishing a subject at a time. So tonight at 8 p.m., we'll be having another session that is for microbiology's metazoology, which involves worms. So we have done MCQs on all the topics, bacteriology, virology, mycology, protozoology. So let me rush through this particular slides faster. I'm Dr. Minakshi Sindram here and I've been a Best Teacher Awardee and I have sent a lot of students of mine to PJ Chandigarh Jivma Ames and various government colleges in the past 11 years and almost all my toppers, I have at least two students who have been in the toppers so I feel blessed at that point of time. So here look at this, the plus subscription is available on Academy and you will be having a code Dr. ASM or Dr. ASM YT to get 10% discount and exclusive access to all my free classes and my special classes and my plus classes. And if you get one subscription, you'll be able to access the courses for all the faculty teaching here. And there's something called as iconic subscription. Get the best of an academy and the best of rep ladder. You'll have live classes with lectures, video light tests and rapid revision courses. And uh, there is a live test going on an academy for NEET PG every day at 8 p.m. for people targeting NEET PG 2021. And for those people who are targeting 2022, the live test is at 9 p.m. 20 MCQs each every day to have a national ranking to see how exactly you fare. So on the front of free live classes on Academy Need PG, let me remind you once again, we have 8 p.m. sessions every day. Tonight, 8 p.m., we are finishing. Tonight, 8 p.m., we're finishing microbiology, and that is with metazoology worms. You can join me there by clicking on the links which I post on my Telegram group. And from 14th of December, that is from November, I mean, 14th of December tomorrow, Monday, we'll be having 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. session, which includes free classes, that is mini revision in microbiology. Mini revision in microbiology. I repeat, there is a mini revision in microbiology over five days from 14th to 18th. An academy is offering you free classes, five days, five nights, that is 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. every day. First day is bacteriology, next day is uh, mycology, third day is immunology, fourth day is virology, and fifth day is parasitology. And you can download the app here and the iStore and the, and the Play Store, and then you can go for plus subscription, get the subscription here. When you use the subscription, you can either choose plus or iconic, and you can proceed to payment by adding this particular referral code. Referral code can be 10% off if you use Dr. ASM and ASMYT. So now let me start the session. This is, uh, okay, the last one thing. This is the Telegram group where you can join to get access to all the links I'll be posting for free classes. You can join this particular session, and this is the Instagram account. So I have given you all the necessary data that I have to tell you on day before we start any free session. Thank you so much for being patient. Now, shall we start? Yes, shall we start the quiz, people? Good 
good evening aditya tk good evening prayash priya etc all of you thank you so much so shall we start are you all ready okay simple way to play this game please use menti.com on your browser along with that of this particular youtube session and use the code a342834 to play this game yes thank you rose vardhan kajal dara kens meet patiwal zaik <coughs> husain mohammed moin mahdi thai rahul soni after a long time i'm seeing you and shreya reddy nice so go to this page go to menti.com and use the code 8342834 8342834 is the code once you place this code by going to menti.com you will be allowed access to play the game so let's start the session here so join immediately for you to have a look at this particular session here yes come on people join i am typing the same go to menti.com and use code 8342834 yes discussion will happen simultaneously you have to shift between that of youtube and the menti session is that clear so the number of live chat viewers are more than the number of people who have joined us on the menti group please join faster i'll give you another 30 more seconds to join it okay so we have spent enough time let's start with the first question answer fast to get more points a diagnosis of amoebic meningoencephalitis is suggested by a recent history of the following except among the four statements which one is not possible exposure to a household contact with a similar illness swimming in fresh water lake bathing in hot springs swimming in chlorinated pool among the four which one is not the history that can go along with that of diagnosis of amoebic meningoencephalitis okay so we received 31 answers till now come on people others join into it we have 30 more seconds yes faster please okay nice so suraj patil for you and students who actually type the answers here for that sake only i have typed this here look at the session here i am telling you please use menti.com no please don't answer here please do not answer here go to menti.com go to menti.com use code 8342834 okay for those people who are trying to answer here nothing wrong in answering here but nobody will be able to know whether you get the answer right or wrong if you are right you will be able to have your place on the top 10 position if you are wrong everybody will be able to see your wrong answer in the comment box section so those people who are trying to answer here if they win they'll be known to the whole world if they are wrong nobody knows so that is the only reason not to have any kind of yes and go to menti.com and use it thank you dpesh karki uh, wilson timu nitin tamil selvan silent doctor chandan patra uh, yes please uh, chandan patra i have heard your names right didn't see except okay so suraj patil yes dr doll 
please try to go to menti.com on the side. I'll give you another 30 seconds time. Say I'm telling you one last time. Please listen. This is important because when you get a wrong answer, everybody will be able to see your wrong answer in the chat box. But when you actually get a right answer, your right answer will not be taken into consideration because ultimately the marks will show the leaderboard, right? So to be on the leaderboard, we are using a system. This system will actually count how many questions you get right and how fast you're giving the answers. The timing and the marking both will be done for all the remaining questions. So ultimately you will know where you stand at the leaderboard. Okay, with this one question, let me not torture you again with the same information. I'm repeating one last time. Please go to menti.com not mentor, menti.com and use the code A342834 and then try to play this game. So one question is done, remaining questions, eight questions are total. So let's go for the leaderboard here. Thank you, thank you Deepesh Karki. So Ram has given the fastest answer, Sedu is given the second fastest and Mas Maharaja, Anjali Babu, Rahul, Anonymous, Kajal, Dr. GSP, Sand and GKB18 are the people who have given the right answer. This is the leaderboard right now. Only nine people out of 60 have given the right answer. Let's go for the next question, please. So on your mark, people, let's go to the second question. I'm starting the question now. Answer fast to get more points. But please answer properly to get some points. After primary infection, the Toxoplasma gondii may persist as cyst forms in all the following tissues, except which are the following areas of your body. They will not form cyst in brain, heart, skin, skeletal muscle, retina. Which one? Take your time. You have 60 seconds time. Nathan Tamil Selvan, Wilson Timu, Silent Doctor, Chandan Patra, Dr. Doll, Suraj Patil. You all can use menti.com and use the code A342834 and try to give the answers there so that your answers will be taken into consideration for marks. How fast you answer and how accurately you answer. This is what will be discussed in this session. Okay, so we have 15 more seconds to go. Come on people, let's start. Okay, so let's see how many of you got the right answer. So the majority has gotten the right answer. Approximately 16% of the people have given the right answer. Let's go well played people. Nice. So the right answer would be skin. Remember, toxoplasma gondii cyst formation can happen in the brain, which can be called as neurocystic properties, though it is not neurocystic sarcosis. Neurotoxoplasmosis or cranial toxoplasmosis is a place where brain can be involved. It can also happen in the heart tissue. It can happen in the skeletal tissue. It definitely happens in the retina, but the only place where it doesn't happen would be the skin. Skin is the place where the cyst is not happening. And when a cyst is accumulating in the particular tissue, that cyst will be a part of your bradyzoid extension. Tachyzoids will be smaller ones floating in the circulation. Remember, tachy starts with a T. Tiny also starts with a T. Tachy means faster. Those trophozoites who can actually multiply so fast will have very small sizes. Those trophozoites who are multiplying very slowly, they have big sizes. So big starts with B. Brady is slow. Bradyzoid is also B. So bradyzoids will be big in size. Tachyzoids will be small in size. Bradyzoids will be accumulating in tissues. Tachyzoids will be floating in the blood. But cyst accumulation does not happen in the skin. These are all the important information you should be knowing. Now let's see the leaderboard at the end of the two questions. We'll see how many of you can get the right answer. Okay, Anonymous, Kajal and Sand have given the right answers along with GB, Nicholas and Johanna here. So Anonymous is the topper right now. Kajal second, Sand third, Ram fourth, Sedu fifth, Mas Maharaja sixth, GB seven, Nicholas, Johanna and Anjali Babu are following. So let's go for the third question of the night. Okay, let's start. Answer fast to get more points. In some malarial infections, treatment to prevent relapse, that is by destroying persistent hepatic zones, is necessary in which of the following? Among the following four kinds of species, relapse prevention is needed in which kind of species of plasmodium? Dr. Doll, I'm not able to understand what exactly is aesthetic question. What is meant by aesthetic question also, Dr. Doll? Ananya Balraj said the way to access only videos in an academic platform. Only videos means what, Ananya? You will have access to all videos, quizzes, etc. So if you want to access my videos, okay, my videos, 
then uh, please follow the instruction code I told you. That is, uh, I, okay, at the end of the class, I'll show you again how to go. The I'll give you the Telegram link. In the Telegram link, I'll actually have the links posted on the Telegram group. You can click on it and you can come back for the classes, okay? So we'll see how many of you got it right. So it has been an equal kind of classes. See, the right answer would be Plasmodium nolesi. Now, let me tell you one simple gist. Plasmodium malariae and Plasmodium falciparum both can have similar properties most of the time. So when we have four important species of Plasmodium taught to us always, that is Plasmodium, Malariae, Falciparum, Ovale, Vivax. Of them, Ovale and Vivax will have similarities and Malariae and Falciparum will have similarities. So when they say the hypnozoids are not formed, then it is a property of both Falciparum and Malariae. Both of them are equally ruled out. Plasmodium kinematoid does not even exist. This is the trick of the question. In case of Plasmodium nolesi, Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium vivax, you will require treatment to prevent the relapse. So in this question, you don't have ovale and vivax. If ovale and vivax was given, it wouldn't be a single answer. So right answer here is Plasmodium nolesi. In nolesi, you will expect hypnozoids. You can have hepatic schizons. So you have to treat them with a hepaticidal agent or schizonticidal agent. Who are the other organisms? Let me repeat. No lessee, ovale, vivax. In three organisms, you have to put the treatment for relapse. Okay, previous question also. Dr. Dahl, uh, question number one. Good evening, Achan Khan. I don't remember the first question. The setup is in such a way that it has to move forward. Okay, in case of acute meningoencephalitis, please remember, person to person never happens as a transmission. Nigeria fowleri, acanthamoeba, or your balamutaya, all of them are acquired from the water areas, that is freshwater areas. The fresh waters can be contaminated. The organism is always acquired by inhaling through the nose, but it is not happening from person to person. So person to person transmission is not correct. That is why option one was the answer. They asked you for except. Next, look at the leaderboard right now here. This is the leaderboard. So this time Anonymous, Sand, Mas Maharaj and Dharani have given the right answer along with GSP, Ambriel also. So at this point, Anonymous is the leader with a very huge margin of leading. Mas Maharaja, Sand, Dharani, Anjali Babu, Kajal, GSP, Ambriel, Akif and Ram are actually on the top 10. So at any point of time, you will be able to crack into the top 10. The people in the top 10 may be pushed outside. So those people who are in the top 10, do not let your position go. And those people outside, please try to come into the top 10. This is how a quiz master can encourage you to go both sides. I have to approach all of you the same way. So let's go for the fourth question of the day. Fourth question of the day. Start people. Triparanzoma cruzi can significantly affect all the following tissues except. Thank you, Deepesh Karki. You are an amazing student. Thank you for being very supportive and kind. Triparanzoma cruzi can significantly affect all the following tissues except. Is it heart, smooth muscle, skin, skeletal muscle, and neural tissue? Okay, we have 40 seconds, people. Only 30% people have written the answers. Come on, others. Take your time. Make it faster, please. Take your time for the appropriate answers and make it faster so that you will be on the top of the leaderboard because every time you take a second delay, you will be going down in comparison with another person who got the same right answer but faster. Okay, 20 seconds remaining. Come on, people. Ananya, you got your answer. Did you hear my explanation, Ananya? Okay, so the time is up. <coughs> I'm sorry. The right answer is skin. Now, this is the tricky part. In the previous question also we saw, Toxoplasma cyst is not accumulating in the skin. Likewise, Trypanosoma cruzi is also known to attack the skin part. Trypanosoma cruzi very well happens to attack heart, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle and neural tissue. In the heart, it is capable of causing cardiomegaly. In the neural tissue, it can destroy. Yes, in the neural tissue, it can easily destroy. Sumit Karna, Sumit Karna and Sarika Swaraj, both of you got the wrong answers. I'm so sorry. Fly High, you also got the answer wrong. It is not skeletal muscle or heart. That is what I'm giving as explanation. So when you give a wrong answer here, everybody is able to know that you are given a wrong answer. But when you get a right answer, you will not get any benefits or marks from the right answer. That is why I'm requesting you go to menti.com. Look at the top of the screen on your screen right now. Debesh Ranjandar, please do not answer here. Your answer will not be getting marks for you. Please look at the top position here. You have go to www.menti.com and use the code 8342834. 
Yes, when you wait for the countdown, you can have edge of the previous questions, correct. So, let me tell you, in heart, it is capable of causing cardiomegaly. In the smooth muscles and skeletal muscles, it is capable of accumulating in the local areas and cause local reactions. In neural tissues like Aubach's and Mayen's plexus, it is capable of destroying the plexus so that the lumen control of the esophagus and the colon has been lost. So, the colon and esophagus will start expanding without any kind of control. So, it can cause mega colon or mega esophagus. So heart is becoming bigger, colon is becoming bigger, esophagus is becoming bigger. So it's an equivalent of a mega disease that is called as Chagas disease. So trypanosoma cruzi causes Chagas disease. It does not affect your skin. In case you want to look at any organism affecting your skin, it is Leishmania donovani, which is capable of causing Kala Azar and also it is capable of causing Leishmaniasis. So Leishmania is a hemoflagellate causing the attack on skin, while trypanosomas are known to attack your CNS, heart and your smooth muscles. So let's go for the fifth question of the day. No, entry side does not produce any lesion in case of trypanosoma cruzi. That is what we discussed yesterday also. In that, we had the patient just scratching his area. By the scratch, the fecal material contained the organ. The organism was inoculated by auto-inoculation. The vector does not bite you in case of trypanosoma cruzi. Please remember, vector does not bite you, which is the redwood bug. That is why it is called as kissing bug. Otherwise, we would have called it as biting bug, right? So, it is a kissing bug, does not bite you, does not injure you. Anonymous is on top, Sand 2nd, Mas Maharaja 3rd, Prasanna 4th, Dharani 5th, Shreya Reddy 6th, Anjali Babu 7th, GKB 18th, 8th, and Kajal 9th, and Dr. GSP 10th. Now, we go for the 5th question of the night. Let's go faster. Answer fast to get more points. Ananya Balraj, I said at the end of the session, I will show you the telegram link. You can join the telegram group. You can actually look for the questions in the telegram group. I will send you the links for my videos. Which of the following can multiply within the human host? Auto infection. Anatomy note and Preeti money help. Please try to use the menti.com site to give me an answer. It can help you get a ranking in the session here at the end of it. You may be using uh, this position here. Sumit Karna, I have told you for the third time, fly high and Rajesh Sarkar. Okay, so if you are wrong, Chagoma is not supposed to be caused attack as a skin. Chagoma will be well engraved inside the subcutaneous tissue. Which of the following can multiply within the human host is strongyloides. Remember, Ascaris does not multiply inside the human host. Ankylostoma does not multiply inside the human host. Trichuris does not multiply inside the human host. Whatever larva has come inside, that will be the adult worm. The adult worm can lay eggs. So laying of eggs is the property of Ascaris, Ankylostoma, Trichuris. But strongyloides as an organism can multiply that is capable of causing auto-infection. Let's look at the leaderboard here. Anonymous is still on top. Sand is here. Prasanna, GKB, Kajal, Ambriel, Akif, Lakshika, Dr. GSP, Dharani. Okay, the top 10 position has changed right now. Excellent playing people. Let's go for the next question. So we have three more questions to finish this session. Come on, people. The last three questions will make a difference. Try to hold on to your top 10 or try to break into the top 10. It is upon your position. School stool examination is the usual initial diagnostic approach in all the following except. Stool examination is the usual initial diagnostic approach in all the following except. Entrobius, Trichuris, Ascaris, Nicator. So think twice before you give an answer. Stool examination. I hope any of you will give me the right answer here. Aman Agarwal, Santosh Logs, Sashi Dayal, Matthew Koshi, Anatomy Note. I have repeated the third time. It's up to you. You can use this comment box section. So four out of the five people who have commented here have got the answer wrong. But everybody can see the wrong answer. But nobody will actually give you marks for the right answer. So the right answer would be 
Entrobia is vermicularis. Why? Because whenever you're going for initial diagnostic approach in the stools, you're looking for the eggs of Entrobia is vermicularis, which can look like lens or coffee bean shaped, which are absolutely crystal clear. At the same time, Entrobia worms will not directly come out into the stools. So what are you supposed to do? The worms will be nagging around the opening of the al canal so near the al canal if you place a scotch tape the scotch tape will actually fetch and bind to all the worms and the scotch tape can be used for looking at the worms so stool examination is not in case of entrobius well it can be done in case of trichurus ascaris and necator where the worms will fall into the stools itself now let's see how many of you yes i understand that no problem so this is just for your information amana garwal santosh shashi matthew and anatomy note so Anonymous is still on top, Sand is second, Prasanna third, Mas Maharaja fourth, Corona fifth, GKB sixth, Kajal seventh, Ambriel eighth, Akif and Lakshikar ninth. Excellent playing people. Yes, you have to go for the swab also. Correct. Next, we have two more questions to go for tonight's session. Let's start. Skin snips are used to diagnose. Look at the picture there. This picture is for diagnosing what? Lower lower, Usheria, Brugia, Oncocerca. Which one? So 50 seconds more. Give me your answers faster. Skin snips are used to diagnose what? Oh, definite Singh is here. After a long time, I'm seeing you, definite Singh. Rinko Kumar. All of you, are, I have seen you before. Sashi Dayal, how are you? Matthew Koshi, Anatomy Note, Amman Agarwal, Santosh, Logs. Nice to see all of you here. Thank you so much for joining. Skin snips are used to diagnose what? Rahul Soni, you have been playing with us for a very long time, Rahul Soni. You have been with us for almost, what, nine months, right? So please use menti.com so that your marks will be counted. Okay, no problem. If you find this is easier, it's okay, keep doing it. Now, the right answer is Onco Sarka, and I'm really happy for many people who have chosen Onco Sarka because this is the one question where the number of right answers are definitely more than the number of wrong answers. So I'm really happy. And it is not lower lower, though there are subcutaneous nodules in it. Skin snips are done because you will be able to see the organisms, small structures, and the antigens floating in that particular skin area. The skin can be examined later for histopathological sites, so that you'll be able to see the organism proper. Now, let's look at the leaderboard. We have one last question to go for it. Haren Sarkar, this is a quiz contest. For that, you have to go to menti.com to get the right answer. And I think we have come to the last question. So please don't feel disappointed. This is the last question for the day. Yes, try to answer this. This will decide whether you will be staying on the top 10 or not. Perpetuation of transmission in clonocus infections is primarily due to which of the following? This can be a slightly confusing question. Please think twice before you answer. Wading in fresh water, refusal to treat with albendazole, lack of careful hand washing, use of human waste as fertilizer. Among the four, which is helpful as perpetuation of transmission in clonocus infection? Haren Sarkar, every menti quiz is supposed to be fixed timing. So, Menti quiz means in that particular software, we'll upload the questions. We'll be having every question just one minute. So it means by discussing it and then to give the answer and then to prepare for the questions be half an hour. All the YouTube sessions are meant to be half an hour for me. So I have already crossed the half an hour. So that is why please forgive me. I was not able to offer you more. But the next time you can join me on the quiz again. In that you will be able to start from the beginning. You'll be having more questions to start. Okay. And Heron, if you would like to join us, I'll tell you there is a free session going on. Now at 8 p.m. we have a free session that is for 90 minutes, 60 MCQs. It will be for metazoology. Please join us there. Okay, so all of you got it wrong. Sita Lakshmi Sundaramurthy and Anatomy Note. It is not either A or C. The answer is D. Remember, when I speak about feed wading in fresh water, it cannot be the answer, but though it can actually be a very tempting answer. Why? Please remember, Clonorchis, Paragonimus, Western Manai are through major or even including facial hepatica are these organisms acquired by 
eating raw fish, especially crayfish. And those organisms, the crayfish are found in the sea water, not in the fresh water. And refusal to treat with albendazole can be the answer for any organism. Just because you don't give albendazole, it does not mean there is a risk of transmission. Albendazole treats, it's not generally prophylactic. And lack of careful hand washing is universal for any organism, but not for these parasites. Because parasites, if at all they are floating on your fingers, you'll be able to notice them. They are not like bacteria or viruses. And use of human waste as fertilizer is the best answer with the given question here. Okay. So, look at this. We have come to the end of it. And I'll show you the leaderboard right away. This is the leaderboard. At the end of all the eight questions, we'll see who has come on top. Okay, Mukesh has given the fastest answer for this question. Okay, so Anonymous is the winner. Sand is second, Prasanna third, Mas Maharaja fourth, Mukesh fifth. So the remaining people have come on the five positions. Excellent playing all of you. Thank you so much. And for those people who want to know more of the quiz, let me know this. See, uh, we have a lot of fresh free classes, I told you. Now at 8 p.m. tonight, we have a class that is 90 minutes session for Metazoology MCQs. We were running a mini MCQ series. Mini revision series will be starting from 14. That is tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. But before that, from the 6th of December till today, that is 13th of December, we were doing MCQs for 90 minutes every day. And tonight we are doing Metazoology. And to get the link for that particular class, you can join me in the Telegram group here. You can search for Minakshi Sundaram AS without any kind of break or spelling or space. Or you can join Biochem and Micro by Dr. ASM. In both the groups, I'll be posting the links for the free classes. And if you'd like to connect with me on Instagram, I'll be posting stories for the classes also and up-to-date tips also. This is how you can approach me on an academy you can message me directly on an academy app also and if you'd like to subscribe for the classes i'm doing a to z of microbiology and biochemistry classes and if you want to have a plus subscription you can use my code dr asm or dr asmyt for those people who have never come for the free classes please use the same code to unlock the free classes also from this month this is a new technique here you can unlock this using my code so i'll see you tonight at 8 pm thank you so much Thank you so much, all of you, for being very patient. And for those people who got disappointed because you couldn't answer, please forgive me. It is all a part of the game. A quiz is a beautiful way by which you can actually crack a lot of questions. You can discuss a lot of new things. Remember, the more you discuss more and more MCQs, the easier it is for you to approach your INACT or NEET PG exams. The NEET PG exams will be approximated two or three or four months from now. But before that, revision is a very important goal for you. But make sure that three-fourths of your time duration every single day is spent on revision and one fourth is compulsorily done for MCQs. So you can join my free classes for MCQ discussion as soon as possible so that that one hour for 30 minutes that you're going to spend will be absolutely useful for solving MCQs. The more MCQs you solve, the more mistakes we'll be learning and commit all the mistakes in the class. Do not have any mistakes left over to commit in the exam. I repeat once again, the more mistakes you commit in the class, the lesser mistakes you'll make in the exam. The more you sweat in the practice field, the less you will bleed in the battlefield. So with this, I'll take your leave. Thank you so much. And at 8 p.m. now, in a matter of just 15 minutes, I'll join you for free classes. For those people who join, want to join free classes, just click on the Telegram app and join me in this particular group. I'll be posting the link.